the Ngong Hills above Kenya's Great Rift Valley are ruled by wind. A result of the cliffs that rise abruptly from the flat, hot valley floor, the breeze here is constant. And for millions of years, vultures have claimed these currents and made these hills their home. Birds love wind because they are not using so much energy to fly. So anywhere there's a lot of wind, you'll find a larger concentration of soaring birds because they still take up the thermal uplift of the wind to minimize energy use in their flight. This place is very important for the vultures. They are quite heavy birds and move long distances because their food is not located where they live. They have to move uh, sometimes many hundreds of kilometers and wind help them. But the energy that birds use to rise, people need too, for power. The Kipeto Wind Power Project is the second largest wind farm in Kenya. Operating 60 turbines, each over 250 feet tall and with blades 160 feet long. And it's only miles from two of the last colonies of some of the most endangered birds in Africa. A growing population drives an ever greater need for renewable energy. And in troubled times for people and birds, this place may have solutions for how we can share the wind. Vultures are really good looking. As an ornithologist, I look at them as really magnificent. Uh, Vultures have a very important role to play in the ecosystem because they take up the carcasses that would otherwise spread diseases in the livestock and that can wipe out our economy. But they have very good sight. Their way of communication is very special. They will be looking for other vultures to know what is happening in the environment, and they will straight away go there. In Africa, we have about 11 species of vultures. In Kenya, we are lucky to have about eight. The two common vultures we have, that is the white-backed and the rupel vulture. A rupel vulture is larger and has actually a silverish bill and the white-backed vulture has a dark bill. The bill is black. For the rupel vulture, they actually nest on the cliff faces, while the white-backed, they nest on very tall trees. They, a lot of time, prefer the acacia. But the shocking fact is that vultures could soon disappear from this landscape and from much of Africa. Four of the vultures are critically endangered, and that is the Rupel's vulture, white-backed vulture, the white-headed vulture, and the Egyptian vulture. Over the last 30 years, African vulture populations have declined by as much as 85%. They are critically endangered meaning that the next stage is just extinction. We are about to lose nearly all our vultures. While not the only threat, the biggest in recent years has been poisoning. When livestock are killed by a wild animal, any one of many readily available agricultural chemicals might be used to turn a carcass into deadly bait. Vultures are collateral damage. One poisoned carcass can kill dozens at a time. Before we had many, many vultures in this place. When a hyena ate a cow, you wanted to kill the hyena, but you didn't 
think of anything else which can eat the, the cacas. With populations so low, every individual counts. Any loss by a turbine strike here must be avoided. Morning, everyone. Good morning. Great to see you. <laughs> Nico will be at the Vantage Point One. The company has hired bird observers to make sure that this wind farm does not affect the vultures and other raptors that are likely to be in conflict with the turbines. We noticed that uh, they are not tropical vultures, but they are white back vultures. They are monitoring the movement of the birds. They were flipping in the air, doing the display. So I started this team from scratch, and I wanted to groom it to the finest ornithologist you can find anywhere in the world. You always do amazing work. You are the best team. Yeah. Great. Have a nice day. Thank you. We will have 16 biodiversity monitors working in vantage points. Uh, eight locations within the wind farm, two in every vantage point. This is a man-made problem and we hold the solution. Radar is not very specific to species. So for Kipeto with very many raptors over 30 species, they are required to use human observers. Whenever the, the birds are in a danger zone or likely to collide with the turbine, we are implementing shutdown on demand. Oh, today you're working with Joseph? Yeah. They can shut a particular turbine until it is safe or the birds have passed Half of the team are used, since they are small boys and girls, in herding. Herding has been part of their life, especially those who come from the local community. They have perfect eyesight. They can see almost five kilometers away and beyond. As Maasai, I love to protect the vultures. They are meaningfully to us. My favorite is the Rupel's vulture. Uh, Jeeps Rupeli, the scientific name. I know many of them, but that's my favorite. Vultures in Africa are chiefly relying on, on sight to find food. When they are flying, they are fast flying, cruising at 50 kilometers per hour, moving very fast, facing down, and creating a blind spot of about 60 degrees. They are not likely to see the power lines and the towers with the turbines. They end up getting electrocuted or colliding with these infrastructures. From steel observation towers, the monitors collect data on what birds are within range and when. Only they can stop a strike. We will shut one turbine, depending on where the birds are flying through. Yes? Uh, Victor Pepper 05 from 6, uh, one of the four jeeps is approaching turbine forward to the western direction. Our turbines can shut within 43 seconds. Turbine 4, ready. From turbine control, turbine 4, ready for shutdown. Turbine 4, ready to stop. Turbine controller, turbine 4, red. From turbine controller, turbine 4, shutting down. Turbine 4 stopped. In terms of vultures, 
only one record for the coalition, and that is within the last 19 months since we started operation. <laughs> From turbine controller, turbine four restarting. Since the turbines average only three minutes lost per shutdown, the energy loss is minimal. We also shut down for the other soaring birds that migrate through the wind farm. The migration is starting of the September toward the end of March. Every year we are shutting down for those species. The crew is also responsible for making sure nothing lures vultures to the wind farm. Every morning, their job is to find any wildlife or livestock carcasses before the scavengers do. We try very much to search at least eight turbines in a day. The idea is to do it frequently, meaning within a week we can search all the 60 turbines. The last two years, we've had increasing drought that is quite abnormal. We've had big increase in carcasses until actually sometimes the team is overwhelmed. Three months ago, we had 50 cows dying within a week and we had about 100 carcasses of cows in one homestead, which is really a big problem. We've actually get information from the landowners that there is a, a dead sheep or a cow or donkey, and that way we are able to respond. The herder's loss can even be the vulture's gain, just not here at Kipeto. With the owner's permission, the team sometimes takes carcasses to the nearby colony at Olerai. This kind of vulture restaurant has been successful elsewhere in providing extra food and keeping the vultures away from potentially poisoned carcasses. The larger solution to ending poisoning is better education, especially when it comes with benefits. If people have better protection for their livestock, Poisoning isn't necessary. Kipeto really put a lot of focus in minimizing the effect of the wind farm and supporting NGOs to do offsetting activities. If there is a kill of one vulture, are we able to save five or ten elsewhere? That's what we are investing. This community has a lot of respect to wildlife. But their thoughts of poisoning ended at killing the culprit. So as a conservation institution, what you're trying to do now with the different interventions that we are implementing is to try and educate the people to show why the poisoning is not only a danger to wildlife or to their livestock, but also to them. Within the Maasai community, the Boma is a home where they live together with their livestock. So what we are doing is using readily available materials in our hardware shops to be able to reinforce uh, these livestock enclosures uh, to protect the livestock better. So the, the traditional one is here. As you can see, the robot can penetrate and get the livestock inside. The hyena can also pass it or the leopard also can jump in. Uh, compared to this one now, a hyena cannot pass down here. And also this one is taller than the other one, so hyena cannot jump. And nothing can pass here. So I came to the point of view of this bomb. I saw that I was going to be able to get the bomb, and I was going to be able to get the bomb. 
na kula mali yangu kwa sawa kabisa Ye yeah, ndiko anapunguza kabisa mm-hmm. sababu tangu ujenge hii sasa hajaona hizo kitu tena. Mimi niko na tumaini ya mbele. Busi yangu na isaingia hapo na tajia. Sasa kwa Masai inatoa mfano kama kama mtu mtu anabaimuka na kupariki nasema unapanda kama Kragos. Unaenda juu kabisa. Alongside its mission to keep the last remaining vultures flying, the bird monitoring program also provides for its people. Since I got a job as a bird monitor, my life becomes comfortable. I can help my husband raise the kids. I can also bring food to the house because I know I have my salary. The vultures actually changed my life. We can tell this story and it can be a very good model that's replicated elsewhere. Wind energy can be done in a sustainable manner. I think it's it's work in progress. We are still very young. But the point is we are sharing. We have more eyes on the ground. We are more aware. So there is hope. But we need more. Wind power and birds can coexist as long as we ensure that there is effective, you know, mitigation elements are being implemented. not just leaving the turbines to run but to consider by the vast within it so we need to keep watch <laughs> we can prevent destruction of our biodiversity our home it's about every one of us we have to act and act now we have to make sure that we don't lose this great species if we don't do it then who will <laughs> <laughs>